Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello students, welcome to Swayam Prabha. The course title is Principles of Marketing and the lecture title is Distribution Decision Part 2. This is Module 13, Lecture 1. I am Dr. Shoma Singupta, Associate Professor Commerce, Kamla Nehru College, University of Delhi. In this module, we will discuss wholesaling and retailing and the distribution logistics concept importance and major logistic decisions. In this lecture, we will discuss first the wholesaling and retailing activities. Wholesaling. Now we know that there is a distance between the manufacturer and the final consumer and we have discussed the different channels of distribution whereby we found that middlemen are there between the manufacturer and consumer to facilitate trade. There we have discussed wholesalers and retailers who are in between the manufacturer and consumer and they are the intermediaries. So the first one is wholesaler or wholes uh, and the function performed by them is known as wholesaling function. So their job is to buy from the manufacturer and sell mostly to the resellers though a few of the wholesalers they sell directly to the consumers as well. But basically, generally, they sell to the resellers only and not the final consumers. So the act of purchasing goods for consumers and industry for further resell is referred to as wholesaling. According to Philip Kotler, wholesaling includes all the activities involved in selling goods or services to those who buy for resale or business use. Wholesaling excludes manufacturers and farmers because they are engaged primarily in the production and it excludes retailers also. So it's a uh, well-defined definition of this function of wholesaling. Those who are into this wholesaling uh, activity are called the wholesalers. So a wholesaler is a middleman who buy goods in large quantities from the manufacturer and resells them to the retailers in small lots. According to American Marketing Association, a wholesaler is a business unit which buys and resells merchandise to the retailers and industrial institutions and commercial users but does not sell in significant amount to the ultimate consumers. So this is about wholesaling and wholesalers. Functions of wholesalers. The first one is buying and sorting as we have discussed in case of distribution also or middlemen uh, also. So they procure and select items from different manufacturers, builds assortment and lots desired by the customers. After doing that, uh, after buying and selling, they sell it. So selling is the uh, next function that is they enable manufacturers to distribute locally without making customer contacts. Management service and counseling is another activity. They help retailers improve their operations by training their salespersons, helping in layouts and displays of stores, setting up accounting and inventory control systems. They also help in promotion of the product. Wholesalers build contacts, wins the trust of the retailers and customers and push the product in the market. The next function is transportation and storage. They provide warehousing and delivery facilities for the movement of goods. They create time and utility, uh, 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 time utility and place utility. The next is market information. They provide marketing and research support for manufacturers, service providers and retailers or institutional customers. Uh, provides information concerning customer needs, price changes, competitors and the new products. They also 
perform a very important function and which is known as bulk breaking because they purchase in large quantities and thus reducing total physical distribution costs of the manufacturers. On the other hand, breaks the bulk into smaller lots and make it convenient for the customers to purchase the product. Another function is financing. They provide great facilities for retail and institutional customers. Uh, orders early, pays advances and clears bills on time to the manufacturers. Sometimes they provide loans also to small manufacturers. They bear all the risks, takes title to the ownership of the products and services, risks are many like th risk of theft, deterioration, obsolescence of inventory. All these risks are borne by the wholesalers. Beside that, they, they perform miscellaneous tasks like provide adjustment for defective merchandise, grading and packaging, provide strained sales force. So these are the functions of wholesalers. Types of wholesalers. There are different types of wholesalers. First is manufacturer wholesaler. Now they undertake wholesaling and are engaged in manufacturing of the goods as well. So they sell goods manufactured by themselves uh, on wholesale basis. They may also distribute the goods of other manufacturers to increase turnover, reduce overhead costs per unit. So basically they are producing the goods and wholesaling. So and in that process, they may keep the products of other manufacturers also. Retailer wholesaler is the next one which is quite common. They undertake both wholesale and retail business. They buy goods in bulk from manufacturers, sells them directly to the ultimate consumer. For example, these are now becoming popular like departmental stores. These are big wholesalers who are into retailing business also, buying from the manufacturer, uh, collecting uh, goods from different type of uh, manufacturers and then selling it in small, small lots through their outlets. So departmental stores, hypermarkets, supermarkets, mail order houses and online stores are becoming popular nowadays. These are all examples of retailer wholesalers. Wholesaler. Pure wholesaler or merchant wholesaler is the traditional type of wholesalers who are purely into wholesaling business only, neither manufacturing nor retailing. So exclusively undertakes wholesaling and not manufacturing or retailing for durable consumer goods, groceries and drugs. This type of wholesalers are there. The merchant wholesalers demand higher compensation for performing large number of functions. So they perform a lot of whole lot of whole lot of functions like buy, take title and take possession of products for further resale, performs full range of distribution tasks, provide credit, store, deliver products um, after merchandising, provides promotion assistance. Uh, they may have their personal sales force also offers research and training support, provides all necessary information to customers, provide installation and after sales services. So they are, they are the pure wholesalers or merchant wholesalers. The types of pure wholesalers or merchant wholesalers may be full service wholesalers or they may be limited service wholesalers. When we talk about full service wholesalers, they provide full range of services like wholesale merchants sell primarily to retailers and provide full range of services. General merchandising wholesalers, they carry several lines of goods from different manufacturers they uh, buy the products. General line wholesalers, they carry one or two lines in the greater depth. Suppose they are dealing in, say, rice, they will deal in rice and wheat. That's it. Uh, while merchandise wholesaler will deal in many product lines. Then there are speciality wholesalers. They carry only a part of one line of goods. Suppose in rice also only basmati rice, one grade of rice, then it is speciality wholesaler. Then there may be industrial distributors. They sell to manufacturers rather than to the retailers because further manufacturing is done on that product. Deals in equipment, spare parts and other raw materials. So uh, these are the types of full service wholesalers. Then there can be 
Let service wholesalers who provide fewer services and uh, uh, the, they are again of different types. One is the cash and carry wholesaler as the name suggests they deal in limited line of FMCG products sell to small retailers for cash do not provide uh, certain services like credit home delivery these are not provided by them then there are truck wholesalers who move from one place to another they carry limited line of per semi perishable merchandise uh, such as milk bread they make the rounds of the grocery stores and uh, supermarkets and sell for cash then there are drop shippers they operate in bulk uh, industries neither they carry stock nor handle the product gets orders and then select the manufacturer and directly gets the product transported or shipped from the uh, manufacturer to the customer so they assume though they uh, assume title they don't take possession of the goods um, they assume the title and risk from time of the order uh, the order is accepted and the uh, time it is delivered uh, to the final customer now um, or, or reseller now uh, for coal heavy equipment this type of drop shippers are there then there are producers cooperatives uh, which you may be uh, uh, well aware of they, they are, these are formed by say farmers or uh, amul is another example where milk producers they they form their own cooperatives they assemble farm produce to sell in the local markets then there are mail order well uh, where wholesalers they send catalogs to um, to retail industrial and institutional customers and once they get orders through mail or telephone they uh, ensure the delivery of goods to these type of customers so these are limited service wholesalers then there can be agents and brokers who are facilitating wholesaler or who are acting as wholesalers also they are merchant wholesalers and they do not take title to the products um, uh, they, they are prevalent for products like steel cement automobile they perform perform different functions like wholesale tasks they do the special expertise and experience in the field they have they enable the manufacturer to expand the sales volume they may work for many firms and carry non competitive and complementary products in exclusive territories they have little say on marketing and pricing so these are agents and brokers wholesaler marketing decisions the first is target market selection that is select target market on the basis of size and type of customers need for service by them so on basis of market study and uh, the customers profile study they select the uh, market target market then uh, products assortment and service decision they have to make assortment and service decision they have to make like whether to carry a full line of products or only profitable lines that they have to decide then when, when taking the pricing decision like adding markup whether to reduce their own profit margin so that they have to decide in case of promotion decision they have to decide about the sales force uh, all decisions regarding sales force how many what type what training that they have to decide also supplier promotion decision they have to take then uh, uh, finally place decision they have to make whether to invest in physical setting or uh, send it through hired processes hired facilities so that you they have to decide for example uh, whether they should have a fleet of their own transport or they should hire it whether they should have their private uh, warehouses or they should rent a warehouse so these decisions uh, are taken by the wholesaler now uh, there is the next heading is elimination of wholesaler uh, arguments in favor of elimination of wholesaler if we say arguments against elimination of wholesaler that we have discussed under functions of wholesaler you know that wholesalers are performing so many functions that uh, they are beneficial for the trade and they facilitate trade but there are certain arguments in favor of elimination of wholesaler because uh, because they add uh, their own profit margin escalate the price sometimes they resort to uh, hoarding also and uh, 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 and um, stopping the supplies so should they be eliminated or not uh, so the, the uh, arguments in favor of elimination are as follows first of all it increases they increase the cost and price by eliminating wholesalers prices of the products will decrease and the consumers shall benefit from that 
of uh, lower prices that benefit will go to the customers manufacturers will be earning more profit as they do not have to give the cut to the uh, middleman or the wholesaler uh, wholesalers obstruct the smooth and quick delivery of goods so by eliminating them one can en ensure unrestricted supply of goods uh, that can take place from manufacturer to retailer to the consumer then they resort to hoarding and stocking of goods that is an again a menace during scarcity especially they sell at exorbitant prices by hoarding the goods and then uh, little by little releasing it in the market they occupy the monopolistic position also where they are sole distributor of the product so, and then then they exploit both the retailers and consumers by charging higher prices next argument is that the whole is that the wholesalers many a times they deal in manufacturers competitors products also causing a decline of sales of uh, this manufacturer's product uh, and rising the um, uh, competitor's products, uh, sale of competitor's products. Smooth transportation uh, is available nowadays, so you can do away with wholesalers. Now the retailers can easily purchase goods directly from the manufacturers. Also, there is a rise of big retailers. So they make their own purchases directly from manufacturers. So they can say that we can say that there is no need of wholesalers like the departmental stores and hypermarkets and uh, big stores. Um, they, they can directly supermarkets. They can directly purchase from the manufacturer and sell it to the uh, customers a rise of cooperative movement is also uh, taking place so they can procure their supplies directly from the manufacturers again wholesalers are not needed and finally rise in direct selling nowadays the manufacturers have started opening their own shops or establishing direct link with the consumers so they can do away with all types of middlemen so these are the arguments in favor of elimination but you will find that wholesalers they perform many functions and it will be a burden on either the manufacturer or the retailer if they if the wholesalers are eliminated so depending upon the situation you can think of eliminating them otherwise the functions will always remain and somebody has to take the responsibility even if you uh, remove the eliminate the wholesaler these functions have to be performed either by the manufacturer or, or uh, retailer trends in wholesaling Wholesaling has dramatically in India due to expansion of marketing activities, entry of foreign exporters, uh, you know that uh, after liberalization and globalization, the competition has increased a lot in the market, vast popularity of internet and mobile phones. So that has changed the whole makeup of doing business. There is a rise of big retailers also. So, so that is a blow to wholesaling business because more of big retailers are coming up. So wholesalers are constantly looking for productivity gains to benefit their customers and themselves and protect their position in the marketplace. They add value to the channel by improving their services and reduce operating costs, providing services to the manufacturers like promotion, giving information, rendering all kind of after sale services and also avoiding vertical integration by the manufacturer. So they, are, they want to showcase their own importance and uh, do not uh, want that the manufacturer should enter into vertical integration. So that is the trend in wholesaling. Nevertheless, uh, because of uh, many options coming up, there is drastic change in the uh, channel of distribution, the traditional channel of distribution. Another type of middleman is the retailer and the uh, function of retail is known as retailing. So retailing is the last stage in a channel of distribution. According to Philip Kotler, retailing includes all activities involved in selling goods or services directly to the final consumers for their personal non-business use. So what the retailer is doing from wherever they are buying, generally from the wholesaler or from the manufacturer, but they are selling uh, to the ultimate consumer who will consume the product and will not resell it. So that is re retailing or uh, the job of the retailer. Now retailer sells goods in small quantities to the ultimate consumer. They may buy it from directly from the manufacturer or from the wholesalers. 
functions of retailers buying assembling and maintaining a wide variety so unlike the wholesalers who generally deal in a few product lines or a, a few lines only in case of retailer they keep a variety of products they deals in different variety purchases from different wholesalers and sells in smaller lot to the consumer they try to locate best and economical source of supply of goods then comes selling they undertake various methods to sell the goods to the ultimate consumers warehousing and storing is another another function they preserve the goods in stores and in go downs supply goods to the consumers as and when required by them and they maintain the reserve stock also in order to ensure uninterrupted supply of goods and avoiding scarcity situations then the next one is transfer of title retailer takes ownership of goods and transfer it to the ultimate consumers the next function is grading and packing they grade the goods pack them in small packages and containers for the convenience of the customers if the product is not graded and packed if they are get, getting it graded and packed either from the manufacturer or the wholesaler then this function is not performed by them then there is credit facilities supply goods on credit to the customers they bear the risk of bad debts also uh, then risk bearing again uh, bears different types of risk in relation to the goods like deterioration spoilage and perishability and until and unless they are under any kind of return agreement uh, then natural risks also they bear like fire flood earthquake then change in customer tastes and preferences that risk is also borne by the retailers then transportation they move the goods from the wholesalers to the consumers they also ensure home delivery in certain cases the next function is demand creation they window this a product in their showrooms and attract the customers Publis publicity is also done by them they pushes the product in the market uh, 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 they persuade the customer to buy a particular brand they give the best shelf positioning to the product collection and supply of market information is also done by them they maintain direct touch with the consumers gather invaluable information with regard to their likes dislikes tastes and demands of the consumer pass on these information to the wholesalers and to the producers they help in introducing the new products now they maintain a direct link with the consumer explain the utility and characteristics of the new product and because of that the producers also give certain allowances and certain benefits to the retailers so as to push their new product in the market so these are the functions of the retailers now if we classify these services uh, we done by uh, the retailer to the wholesalers to the consumer then the first of all the services to wholesalers are they supply invaluable information to them relieve them from selling goods in small quantities to the consumers place orders in advance with the wholesalers make advance payments helps in introducing a new product services provided by retailer to the consumer they assemble variety of products buy and stock these products allows cash discount supply fresh products to the consumers provide customers a convenience of choice provide credit credit facility to them free home delivery and after sale services extend personalized service to customers to maximize their satisfaction in case of introducing the new product they help in that process give advices and guides the customers about the new product they take back the goods which do not suit the consumers and replace them and if if it is damaged they they ensure that uh, Uh, the damage is removed or the goods are replaced so these is the, these are the services provided by the retailer to the consumer types of retailing different types of retailing options are there the first category is store based retailing now it is a big category one is one uh, type is uh, under that is departmental stores uh, 
these are the large retail establishments which are centrally located and they carry several product lines um in uh, in an extreme case they say that you can get a uh, from pin to aeroplane in a departmental store that kind of variety is maintained now it is convenient for the customer they have to enter that departmental store take a card and pick up whatever they want from different uh, uh, corners of or different racks of the departmental store uh, and also there are sales people who help them out in that process um, but the demerit of departmental store is one it is centrally located so it may be far away from people located in distant places that is one thing second thing some people do not find them find it convenient uh, uh, to go to the departmental store uh, they are habituated to buy from the small retail outlets near their home then there are the supermarkets they are low cost large scale retail establishments selling a wide variety of goods under one roof and on a self service basis the um, operating cost is lower in case of supermarkets so the prices of the products are lower in comparison to departmental store until and unless you are buying a branded product which are of most of the time uh, same prices then comes the chain store this is this is a group of retail stores of similar types dealing in same products but located at different places you will find that these cha chain stores look exactly similar uh, the uh, the logo the uh, the um, hoarding everything is similar the signboard and everything uh, is similar the even the decor of the stores are similar and the products they carry are same so you can buy visit any of the chain store which is nearby your home and, and you will get the same quality and same type of uh, product uh, the advantage of this type of chain store for the manufacturer is they are dividing the risk of sale uh, for uh, for the uh, and uh, it's a kind of a direct selling also many a times uh, for the consumer it is convenient to go visit and buy products from there so that is about the chain store but uh, the expenditure escalates escalates for the manufacturer so those manufacturers who have high financial standing or who can enter into franchise agreements with different uh, people retailers they can go for chain stores then come specialty stores they carry narrow product line like a bookstore or a medicine store these are specialty stores then there can be retail cooperatives which are owned and operated by the consumers themselves then there can be discount stores they sell standard merchandise at lower prices when we talk about non store retailing there can be direct selling where there is no intermediary one to one selling can take place where sales person visits the customer place one to many selling can also take place where the sales sales person meet a group of customers multi level or network selling is also popular in uh, companies like avon uh, they they have introduced that recruits independent business persons who in turn recruit others to sell the products then there can be direct marketing which is broader than direct selling here mail order houses or direct mail houses will be there selling through mail catalog marketing they are sending catalogs to the customers and taking orders telemarketing sales people establish contact with prospective customers and closes the sales over the telephone electronic shopping online selling through any electronic means automated retail vending machines can be placed machines are located at public places from where the customers can directly buy the product so these are the types of retailing now in like uh, in case of wholesaling retailing also managing retailing you have to take certain decisions like target market decisions where the target market is there you will open up your retail store so that traffic can be built people will come to the store and buy the product merchandising decision has to be taken like product assortment and procurement decision what products you will keep in the uh, store uh, in what quantity that you have to decide the store decisions have to be taken like how to uh, deco uh, what will be the decor of the store where the things will be poured what type of services will be provided 
uh, then uh, the stores uh, 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 what type of uh, sign boards will be there the lighting everything and how, how many so sales person will be there in the store that will be decided then pricing decision has to be taken like um, uh, whether whether to add some markup because you are doing some grading and uh, some labeling is done by you so depending upon the services you are providing you have to price the product also you can add markup depending upon the type of the product if it is a uh, if it is a, a manufactured product which is graded and packed and uh, the price is already mentioned in it then the retailer cannot add his markup but only uh, 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 margin will be there but he cannot sell be, uh, beyond the mrp so that is the thing so margin will of course be there but beyond that he cannot sell uh, beyond whatever is mentioned uh, that is the uh, maximum resale price then a place decision has to be taken how many stores where um, uh, near to the place of residence of people or centrally located so that decision has to be taken service decision you have to take whether credit facility will be given or not or to the customers or uh, free home delivery installation after sale services and accordingly the price will escalate so that is managing retailing changing trends in retailing you know that how uh, changes have taken place the retailers have grown outgrown their size and uh, uh, they are eating up the job of wholesalers like they are directly buying goods from the manufacturer and selling it to the retailers moreover online also purchasing and selling is done so growing competition is happening in retail sector more of fdi investment in retail retailing is taking place foreign direct investments so foreign players are also entering the retail sector so it is becoming very difficult for the small retailers to survive in such a situation uh, as we have said foreign direct investment is there in most of the types of retail sector also all the government is monitoring uh, the fdis but still you will find the retailers are facing huge challenge from from uh, big big investors then shopping malls are opening up whereby different stores are there and um, uh, they maintain a specific level of uh, quality and service so that is a, another trend then non store retailing is happening like um, direct selling is happening in case of retail sectors uh, thanks to all the online channels you have or uh, and direct mailing is of course there sophisticated technology is helping in retailing you are taking orders online delivering it online if it is a soft product uh, or or if it is a, uh, if it is a physical product then naturally you ensure that it is delivered uh, to the customers in fact supply chain management is uh, happening some of the retailers they are not keeping any stock at all um, amazon is one of them directly they are purchasing from the manufacturer whenever they are getting an order they direct the manufacturer to uh, transport it to the uh, uh, ultimate customer then uh, congregates are happening uh, uh, and uh, and also mass merchandising and speciality retailers are also there um, uh, who are big big retailers and they 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 are uh, dealing in only few products so that is about that is also happening and finally e retailing which we have discussed in so, uh, sophisticated technology also um, retail malls are there e retail malls are there e retail shops are there uh, of the um, most of the companies they have a store front a well designed store front and uh, all the products are mentioned over there catalogs are there there is a cart online cart is there you have to select the product and that will be priced and you have to pay through uh, different channels like uh, different modes like uh, debit card credit card or uh, transfers and paytm and all and by through that mode you can uh, take the order and get it delivered to the customer so e retailing is uh, becoming uh, uh, very popular now it is so these are the changing trends in retailing to summarize this lecture we can say a wholesaler is a middleman who buys goods who buys goods in large quantities from the manufacturers and resell them to the retailers in small lots functions of wholesalers are buying sorting selling 
promotion, management uh, services and counseling, bulk breaking, providing information, credit facility, transportation, storage, etc. Retailer sells goods in small quantities to the ultimate consumers. The type of retail uh, retailers are store based like specialty stores, departmental stores, chain stores, retail cooperatives, supermarkets and non-store based retailers may be direct selling, direct marketing, telemarketing, automated retail vending machines and mail order houses. Thank you very much students. This was distribution decision part 2 module 13 lecture 1.